Give them of God for protection in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we give you praise and we give you glory that the children of God shall serve. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord as we welcome the man of God. Amen. Please, you are welcome. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 1, verses 18. It reads that Jesus Christ, he is the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning. He is the first born from the dead. That in all things, he has the preeminence. He has the preeminence in my life. He had the preeminence yesterday. He has the preeminence today. And he has the preeminence tomorrow. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. I acknowledge you, Pastor Emmanuel Tego. I thank you for your wife, Evangelist Patience Tego. I greet the con congregation. I greet the cloud of witnesses. I greet the angels, because angels are in this room. They're listening to the gospel. Because things are, uh, I'm, I'm speaking mysteries. I'm opening up mysteries. And it's things that even the angels did not know. You'll find this in Peter's epistle, because it says the prophets inquired and they searched diligently what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ that was in them prophesied of the of, of, of our salvation and the glory that should follow it said that even the angels are looking into these things the great crowd of witnesses including Moses and Elijah and Jeremiah and Isaiah they're actually listening they're listening here the scripture talks of in the Song of Solomon uh, about the Shulamite woman. It says that the Shulamite woman is the company of two camps. It's the company of two camps. It's the Old Testament priests and prophets, the New Testament priests and prophets, and the two camps also includes the angelic realm. They're hearing things that they've never heard before. Amen. The scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 8, that if the rulers of this world had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Because we, I'm preaching wisdom, the hidden wisdom of God. Uh, it's not the wisdom that man's, uh, that man's wisdom teaches, but it's the wisdom that the Holy Ghost teaches. So I'm teaching according to the Holy Ghost, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 20 also says that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation that holy men of god moved as they were uh, holy men of god spoke as they were moved by the holy ghost i am moved by the holy ghost i'm not moved by coronation street emmerdale farm or neither am i moved by eastenders i'm not moved by mcdonald's i'm not moved by kentucky fried chicken I'm not moved by any of those things. I am moved by the Holy Spirit. He lives in me. He dwells in me in Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen. Hallelujah. So, Father, I also pray according to Ephesians chapter 3, that, no, it's Ephesians chapter 1. I'll have to check the verse. I pray, Father, that you grant unto this congregation the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Let the eyes of their understanding be enlightened, that they may know the hope of his calling, and what are the riches of the glory of our inheritance, in the, his inheritance in the saints, the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe that he, he worked in Christ when he raised him up from the dead, set him at his right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality, power, and might, and above every name that is named in the name of Jesus. Scripture says that if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Amen. The Holy Ghost is speaking because I don't, I don't plan these. I, I know what I want to say, but I let the, as I said, I give the preeminence to Jesus.
because where two or three are, are gathered, he's in the midst. He's, Jesus is here. Amen. Glory to God. I'm preaching on the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of God is the vineyard of God. I'm also preaching on the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is a man, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I repeat these scriptures because I want to get it in your spirit. There is a difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God is the vineyard of God. The kingdom of God is his people. The kingdom of heaven is God himself. There is a difference. I'm going to cover some scriptures. I hope the pastor would allow me an extra five minutes. I've, I've got so much meat to preach today, so I'll, I'll move quickly. The, the Lord of the vineyard is a man. I am, I am from the Logos of Christ ministry, and I'm Pastor Eric Speet. I'm a revelation teacher. I'll say that again. I'm Pastor Eric Speet. I'm a revelation teacher and preacher. I can preach the meat of the word. I can preach the milk of the word. I can preach the vegetables. But first and foremost, I'm a revelation teacher. Get that? I'm going to say it one more time. Pastor Eric Speet, I am a revelation teacher and preacher. I teach and I preach revelation. You know, um, my pastor has said, there's people that know the Bible, there's people that understand the Bible, there's people that read the Bible, but they don't have revelation knowledge. Let me pray for the people that are watching. I pray for everyone that is listening to this video, everyone that listens to these teachings. I pray by the Spirit of God that the Lord would grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know the hope of his calling, what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, that he wrought work manifested in Christ when he raised him up from the dead, setting in him on his right hand, in heavenly places, far above all principality, power, might, and above every dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the age that is to come in Jesus' name. Receive revelation knowledge. I also pray, I ask the Holy Ghost to draw people unto this ministry. Hallelujah to uh, Salvation Outreach Baptist Church. The word of God is preached. Christ crucified is preached here to transform destinies in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the, the pastor of the house. Uh, Pastor Emmanuel Tego, I love this man, I love his wife, they're, they're great people, they've got lovely sweet spirits, they've got some, a real lovely sweet spirit, that's why I'm standing here, you know, because I, I can discern spirit, I, I have a discerning of spirit, as the pastor was talking last week, and I can, I can feel your spirit, whether it's sweet or not, there's some people they might be believers, but they don't have a sweet spirit. Spirit's not sweet. Amen. Moving on. I'll say once more. Pastor Eric Sleep, I'm a revelation teacher. Let me prove that by scripture. Amen. I'm a and I, I will let you know what a revelation teacher is and a preacher. I'm going to define it. I don't say anything unless I can show you the scripture. Matthew 16, verses 16. Matthew 16, verses 16. I will turn this so that we can all see it to save time. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. I will turn. Okay, we thank Jesus. God is good all the time. So we will find, I'm defining what a revelation teacher is. The Holy Ghost told me to do this. Okay, okay, okay. I want you to, to read this, people of God. Uh, I need to just... Right. Can we all... Can you see those, can you see those scriptures from where you're sitting? Yes. Evangelist, can you see yes. the scriptures? Yes. Amen. Amen. 
Let's read from, from verse 13. I'll read it uh, so that... Oh, no, Abby, would you mind reading, please? You can read from your scripture or you can read from the board. You know, read from the board. Read from the board. Can you see it? Can you see it? Verse 13, please. Uh, Matthew chapter 16, 16 verse 13. 13. Okay. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea yeah. Philippi, he asked his, his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, I am stuck? Amen. So I'm going to qualify. Right. So Jesus, he asked his disciples. So one of the first qualifications to be a revelation teacher and preacher, you have to be a disciple. Amen. Amen. Keep reading, please. Verse 14. And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist. Baptist, yeah. Some Elias. Yes, yeah. And others, others Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Or one of, of the prophets. prophets. Amen. Verse, Verse 15. 15. He, he said unto them, His disciples, Whom, but whom do you see that I, I am? am? Yeah. And Peter's confession of him. Verse 16. And Simon Peter answered, answered and, and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. God. Verse 17. And Jesus answered and, and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon the Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto me, but my Father, which is in heaven. Thank you, thank you, Amen. thank you, Abby. Right, I'll expound on that. Because Jesus asked, so one of the qualifications for being a revelation teacher, number one, you have to be a disciple. Number two, because Jesus is speaking to his disciples in verse 13, he's, uh, uh, Jesus, Jesus asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I am? And the disciples replied, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He, Jesus, saith unto them, But who do you, disciples, say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Peter, Blessed art thou, Pastor Eric Ski, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. The Father... My father, he revealed things to me. There's things that you cannot read. There's things that you, your intellect will not show you. It's not my intellect. So I speak the things that the father reveals to me from the scripture, and then I come and I expound on it, and I speak to you. That is why I'm a revelation teacher, because the father gives it directly to me. And then I come out of the most holy place and I will speak uh, to other people to bring them up to a level of understanding. I'll say it again. It's my Father, which is in heaven, he reveals. So revelation knowledge is not taught. It has to be revealed. So he reveals to me from his mouth. But it has to be, it must be agree with scripture. If it doesn't agree with scripture, then it's not my father. Amen? So when the, amen. So when the Holy Ghost speaks something in my spirit, I run to the scriptures to see whether what uh, the voice I heard in my spirit, whether it agrees with the scripture. If it does not agree with any scripture, then that's not the Holy Spirit, and it's not my father. The, the spirit and the word must agree. The spirit, the spirit of God, so any voice you hear, you might hear a voice say something, and you might think it's revelation knowledge. If, it, if you cannot find any references in the scripture, reject it. It ain't the Holy Ghost, it's not the Father. Amen? Amen. So, so I'm a disciple of Jesus, I speak directly to the Father, face to face, and he reveals. Amen. Everything that he reveals is in the scripture, but he opens it up to give me an understanding of what I'm reading in Jesus' name. Amen. Just wanted to show you that. Back to the teaching. Okay. So the kingdom of God, that's why I'm a revelation teacher. I receive directly from the Holy Ghost and from the Father, and then I go to the scripture to confirm 
that it agrees with scripture. Amen. Next one. Okay. The kingdom of God, the vineyard of God, as I said, um, the Holy Ghost told me to do this. Uh, Revel this is revelation teaching. In fact, that's what we just looked at. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, blessed art you, Pastor Eric Ski, because flesh and blood has not revealed it things to me, Pastor Eric Ski, but it's the Father that reveals things to me. And this is why I can come and I can teach you and I can show you line by line, precept by precept. Also, I've been ministering for the last 12 weeks on the pattern, number one. Unless you understand the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of the instruments thereof, you will not understand the scripture. You will not rightly divide the word. The next topic I talked about was the feast, the feast of the Lord or the appointments of the Lord, which is Jesus's, his death, his burial, his resurrection. When you read the gospels, Jesus is always going up to Jerusalem. He's always going up to the Jerusalem and he's always going up to Jerusalem to keep an appointment. What appointment? Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. He's always going up. There is no mention in any of the Gospels of Pentecost, but it's, it's there. When you see it, you see it. It is there. I will show it to special people, but not today. Okay, so we've seen that. That's what I just looked at. So these are definitions of the kingdom of God. There's many facets to the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. It says, Israel is my son, my firstborn. That was the other topic area that I, I will introduce to this audience or whoever's watching, the principle of the firstborn. Because we just read in Colossians chapter 1, verses 18, that Jesus Christ is the firstborn of all creation. He's the firstborn uh, of the first fruits of them that slept. There's a doctrine. I've never heard it taught. Never. But the Father revealed it to me. There's the principle of the firstborn. Israel is my firstborn. The firstborn principle represents the, 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 so the firstborn. When you see firstborn in, in the scripture, he's talking about the firstborn of all of creation and the firstborn of humanity. When you read in the scriptures, it talks about the firstling. He's talking about the animal kingdom. When you read about the first fruit, he's speaking about the vegetable kingdom. He's also, I would say, he's, because he's the firstborn of all creation, he's also a stone that the builders rejected. He is a rock, he's a stone, he's water, so on and so forth, representing the creation. So then he represents the animal, uh, the mineral kingdom. So I'll say it once more, then I'll move. So firstborn, he's representing humanity. Uh, as the firstling, he's representing the animal kingdom. As the first fruit, he's representing the veg uh, the yes first fruit. He's representing the vegetable kingdom, and as a rock, as a stone, as Christ, he's representing the mineral kingdom. This is revelation. This is revealed to me by the Holy Ghost, and I will show all scriptures for this. Moving on. So the kingdom, the, the one to understand this kingdom of God, you must know this scripture. The kingdom of God is in Matthew chapters twenty-one, forty-one. The vineyard, yeah, I'll go there in a minute, and Isaiah 5, verse 7. This is the Old Testament. Unless you know what the Old Testament says, you will not understand, you know, the readers will not understand the new. So the foundation for the kingdom of God is in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 7. Moving on. So the kingdom of God is life. You heard me say, I don't preach sin, death, and the grave. I only preach life, because that's what Jesus preached. The kingdom of God is incorruption. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50. We'll get there. The kingdom of God is immortality. That's 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 10. The, uh, one, go to the Psalms. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So there's many facets to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is the gospel. You'll find that in Mark's gospel, chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. The kingdom of God is the Holy Ghost, Romans chapter 14, verses 17. Because of time, I'm moving quickly because I want to get some scriptures. <sighs> so we covered this last week. I'm going to spend some time here. I rushed through it the last time. The kingdom of God, sorry, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man. I declare to you that the kingdom of God is a man. Sorry, the kingdom of heaven is a man. I'm showing the differences between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is a man. 
I am a kingdom of heaven because I preach the gospel. Because the heavens, Psalm 19, verses 1, the heavens declare and preach the glory of God. So whoever preaches and declares the glory of God is a heaven. The scriptures is also a heaven because the scriptures declare the glory of God. The scriptures declare uh, and the glory of God is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I covered that quite extensively last week. If you look at my video, uh, I, the, the, the videos are numbered, it's number 12. Okay, ah, here's Revelation. Let me read it. I would, uh, this is a lot of meat here. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder which went out early in the morning to hire. When somebody is hired, you pay them wages, okay? To hire laborers into his vineyard. So he hired laborers to come into the kingdom of God because the vineyard of God is the kingdom of God. So he, he hired laborers into, into the kingdom of God, the vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny, a day, he sent them into his vineyard. So he sent them to preach. This is what he's saying. This is a mystery that people don't understand. The vineyard of God is the kingdom of God. So when he had agreed, verse 2, when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard, and he went, and he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, go into the kingdom of God. This is what he's saying. You must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. I'm actually showing you what, it, what Jesus is speaking about secretly. And whatsoever is right, I will give you a penny. He's agreed. He has agreed he will pay one penny for a day. Okay? So he said, he, verse 4, he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, I will give you. And they went their way. Again, he went out about the sixth hour and the ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour, we are the, we, it's us, we are the eleventh hour people. We're not the third hour people. We're not the ninth hour people. We're not the early morning preacher, teachers, preachers. We are the eleventh hour people. So we are the last. So he went out at the eleventh hour because from... El the Hebrew day is, is divided into 12 hours. So the last hour of the, of the Hebrew day is from, from 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. In, in the evening. Sorry, from 5 p.m. till 6 p.m. The, the Jewish day finishes at 6 p.m. in the evening. But nevertheless, it, which is also the 11th hour. So we are 11th hour workers. We are 11th hour laborers. Okay, moving on. They say unto him, because, right, verse 6, and about the eleventh hour, this is us, about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle. And well, that word idle in, in Greek is the word argos. You know the shop you go buy some things from? Argos, the, the shop. When you look in the Greek, I study Hebrew, I study Greek. The word idle is argos. So I said that because God gives us he gives us indications by words and companies where we are prophetically. Why is there a company called Argos? Because the word idol means is Argos. The word Nike, we have, we have a shoe manufacturer called Nike. What does Nike mean? Nike in, Hebrew, in Greek means victory. Nike in Greek is victory. And he said, the faith that we have that has overcome the world, he said, this is the victory that we have our faith. So he gives us clues. By having all these companies, we've got Nike, which is, means it also be victory, it means also to overcome. Argos means to be idle, moving on. So these are just little nuggets. So they, right, verse six, and about the eleventh hour, which is us, he went out and found others standing idle and said unto them, why stand you here all day idle? They said unto him, because no man has hired us, but he's hired us now. Can you, can you guys see this? These scriptures, um, Pastor O'Kelly, can, yeah. can you read the scripture or you need your glasses? But can you guys see these verses? Because it's important, I want you to get. So Pastor, you can sit. What I'll do then, okay. Uh, I'll just concentrate on that side. They said, because no man has sired us. He saith unto them, go you also into the vineyard, go into the kingdom of God and start to preach this what he's saying. Whatsoever is right, that shall you receive. So when even, even means evening, his revelation of the evil is the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And when he says in 
uh, weeping in joys for the night, joy comes in the morning. So the, whenever you see the word even in scripture, it means it's crucifixion, it's evening, right? And when the crucifixion was come, when the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, the Holy Ghost, call the laborers, because Paul said, we're co-laborers with Christ, and a co-laborer with Christ, you're a preacher. So, so when the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last to the first. Why does he reward the last first? Because we're the last, we're, the, we're preaching. So he, he rewards us first, he pays us first. And what does he pay for penny? He gives us a penny, that's our wages. I'm actually gonna tell the penny that, that, that the penny that the, the man gives us is the image of God. We lost the image of God when Adam fell. So he gave them a penny. He gave them back the image of God. After the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, they went preaching the gospel and he paid them a penny. I will show you by scripture that the penny represents the image of God. I'll say it again. The penny that was paid, Jesus, he has given us back the image of God that Adam lost. So we have a penny. This is why everybody is paid the same thing. Everybody is given a penny because the penny represents the image of God. Moving on, I'll show you by scripture. So when the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus was come, the Lord of the vineyard, the Lord of the kingdom of God, the Lord of the gospel, because the vineyard is the gospel, he saith unto his steward, call the laborers, the preachers, whoever is in the kingdom of God, give them their hire, their wages, beginning from the last verse, because we're now preaching. The Old Testament saints had to wait for us. They had to wait for us. So we got, we, we, we've got paid first because we, we've got the penny. Okay. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. The men of Judah, his pleasant plan. Okay. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The men of Judah, his pleasant plan. So you have a vineyard and you have plants that are planted in the vineyard. You follow that. There's a vineyard and you have to have plants in the vineyard. Jesus said, I'm the true vine, planted in the vineyard, in the kingdom of God and in the scripture. So the kingdom of God, the kingdom of, the kingdom of God, which is of the Lord, of course, is the house of Israel, the men of Judah, his pleasant plant. They are the vine. So the, in the vineyard, you plant vines. You plant vines in the vineyard. You follow that. And what is the vine? The vine is Judah. He tells us, the men of Judah. Where do which tribe do the kings come out of? Judah. So the kings in the kingdom of God, the kings, the men of Judah, who are the line of the kings, is in the vineyard of God, which is the gospel, okay? So the, the men of Judah is present plan, and he looked for judgment. So this is why Jesus came to the earth. He came looking for fruit. In John's gospel, he talks about, you know, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you bear fruit, uh, you'll be pruned to bear more fruit. If you do not bear any fruit, you'll be cut down and be cast into the fire. But that's not a horrible thing that people think. I will teach on that. You look for judgment, but behold the oppression, for righteousness, but behold the cry. So the men of Judah are the vines in the vineyard. I've said it here. The men of Judah are the vines in the vineyard. Okay? Uh, let's go up here. I've said it, so, okay. So the, the men of Judah are the vines in the vineyard. If we come over here to Matthew chapters 21, 38, 43. So, yeah. So the vines in the vineyard are the kings in the kingdom of God. Matthew 21, 38, 43. Because I'm, I'm showing you by scripture that the penny, that the penny that Jesus paid us for our hire the penny represents the image of God. I will show you from scripture. Now this is, this is, this is revelation because I'm a revelation teacher, okay? But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, this is the heir. They're talking about Jesus. So when they saw Jesus, they said, this is the heir. He's the owner of the vineyard. Uh, this is the heir, come let us kill him. Because they killed Jesus, right? Let us kill him, let us seize on his inheritance. What is the inheritance? The vineyard. And so they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. 
when the Lord therefore of the vineyard of the kingdom comes, what will he do unto those husbandmen? They say unto him, he will miserably destroy those wicked men and will let out his vineyard to others. So I'm proving to you that the vineyard of God is the kingdom of God, okay? He said he will let out his vineyard to other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruit in their seasons. Jesus saith unto them, Did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner? This is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. Secretly, Jesus is telling us that the scriptures is also the vineyard, because Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection is hidden in the scriptures. He's also saying that the scriptures, I'll say that, which Jesus said unto them, Did you never read in the scriptures? So secretly, he's saying the scriptures is also the vineyard of God, because in the vineyard of God is Jesus. His death, his burial, his resurrection is hidden in the scriptures, okay? The stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, his mouth in the eyes, okay? Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken. So if, if you compare that verse, verse 41 with verse 43, one minute he's talking about the vineyard, and in the next verse he's talking about the kingdom of God. So I've, I've demonstrated to you from scripture from verses 43, he said, he will let out his vineyard. Verse 43, the kingdom of God shall be taken. So to let out also corresponds with taken. This is how he hides his, his revelation knowledge. The kingdom of God, the vineyard, will be taken from the Jewish nation and given to us. But God had not rejected the, the Jewish nation. He hasn't rejected him because he said that all Israel will be saved. Two more minutes and I'm closing. Uh, from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. So let out, take it, give it to us. The kingdom of heaven is a man. I'm closing. The kingdom of heaven is a man. We've seen that. The kingdom of heaven is the Lord of the vineyard. I've, I've demonstrated that. The kingdom of God is, right, so the kingdom of God is the vineyard. The kingdom of God is the house of Israel. Exodus chapter 4, verses 22. Therefore the Lord, the man, is the kingdom of heaven ruling over the kingdom of God, the house of Israel. So the, as the vine is in the vineyard, the kingdom of heaven is in, so as the, the, the vine is in the vineyard, the kingdom of heaven is in the kingdom of God. This is where the complications arise. And I want to prove to you that the penny, the penny that the Lord of the vineyard paid was the image of God, because we lost the image of God. Adam lost the image of God. So I'm declaring to you that the penny of put T-I-O-G, the penny that was paid to the laborers, which is us, the preachers, because we're born again, that penny represents the image of God. This is the last scripture, and then I'm finished. I will show you. Okay, we have to go to another verse, because to understand the scriptures, you have to go to different verses. To work, work, okay. to work in the vineyard is to believe the gospel. To work in the vineyard is to believe the gospel. I will expand on, on that more. Because in John chapter 6, verse 29, uh, the disciples and the Pharisees said to Jesus, how do we work the works of God? He said, to work the works of God is to believe. Yeah? Right, here's the penny. I'm going to stop here. Labor in the vineyard for higher reward. A penny for a day's labor. We've already read that. A penny is God's image. A penny represents God's image. So when you preach, when you're preaching the gospel, the Holy Ghost is in you. You're paid a day's wages, which is a penny. And that penny the, is, is actually saying that the image of God is restored back to you, which Adam lost. And here's the scripture. Let me read it quickly. And say, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. To work in the vineyard is to believe the gospel. I'll go through this again more slowly. Believe the gospel, obey the gospel, and move on. Uh, plant a vineyard. So when you plant a vineyard, you're preaching the gospel. Da 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 da. Plant a vineyard. Da, da. I'm looking for the verse. Okay, I'll just turn to Mark chapter, Mark chapter 12, because I'm proving to you that the penny that is paid to the workers is the image of God, and it's hidden. I will show you my last scriptures, Pastor, and I'm finished. Yeah. Uh, I have to go here, and just go to the verses. So it's Mark chapter 12, and I'm done. Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. Uh, 
Mark chapter 12, I think it's... Right, okay, right there. This, all right. The image of the penny is the image of God. This is one of God's secrets. Here we go. Okay, verse 14. And when they were come, they said unto him, Master, we know that thou art true and carest for no man, for thou regardest not the person of men, but teachest the way of truth of God. Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar? Here's the key. Is it lawful to pay tax to Caesar? Shall we give or shall we not give? But he, knowing the hypocrisy, said unto them, Why tempt you me? Bring me a penny. He said, Bring me a penny that I may see it. And they brought it, the penny. And he said unto them, Whose is this image? He's talking about the image of God. Whose is this image on the penny? Whose image and superscription? And they said, And they said unto him, on the image on the penny is Caesar. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God. So secretly he's saying that that penny is the wage of the paid, paid as wage in eternal life, is the image of God. Uh, yeah. Whose, in, whose is this image and superscription? And they said unto Caesar, that's one key, and Jesus answering said unto them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God. So he's saying that we have to pay a penny. We have to pay, give to God the things that are God, which is the penny, which is the image of God that is restored to us in Jesus' name. I'll expand some more because time is fast spent in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Things to God, He gave to God the penny. Amen. So that we will be free. 